a well-oiled machine, as people talk about. Well, you know, there's so many things from everything you just mentioned. There's a plethora of questions that could pull off of that and right. every single aspect of stuff that comes through you all. But it is civil, criminal, and... Family court. Family court. I'm sure family court probably takes up a heck of a lot of time and also a lot of resources flow through y'all, doesn't it? It does. The and child support, uh, all those dollars, did you say those flow through you? They do. We collect and disperse child support and alimony. We collected in the year 2010, $17,600,000 oh, in come child on. support and alimony. Son of a gun. So yeah. let's see, so it comes into your office and then do you, how, do, how does that work? Once uh, it comes in, we receipt it in, with, right. and once it receipts in every day, we send a printout over to the finance department and the treasurer's office, and they process the checks to send out to individuals. Okay. But that is soon going to change because now um, the federal government is, we're the only county and I mean, the only state in the United States that's not on the centralized child support collection. Okay. So South Carolina has to go on it because they get penalized for oh, not doing so. Right. So right now we're in the process of building this system together with a com with this company that has got the contract to do it and at that point when it gets to that point the money will, monies will then be sent to Columbia to a centralized okay. area and then they will disperse the money out Right. to the individuals, not by check. It will uh -huh. only be done by direct deposit or something like a debit card. Wow. Like you have your checking account with. Right now though, if you pay your support today, right. an individual does, then the check goes out to the recipient the next day. Okay, wow. And I think they, they're they saying right now a three to four day turnover once it goes to the When it moves to the federal, federal side. Mandate Boy, well system. folks are gonna be sad to see that happen, I'm sure. Yeah, well you got to realize when you got monies coming in from 46 counties to right. be dispersed to a centralized area, and wow. then if every county takes in 17 million 600,000, and Charleston County takes in right. a great deal, right. you know, because we're in the top three as far as caseload with Charleston, Greenville, and then us. Right. Wow. You know, so we're right up there at the very top. You mentioned the words jury duty. How are folks selected? How are individuals selected for jury duty, Melanie? That's got to be a question people ask. It is by three different ways. It's either by voter's registration, by your driver's license, or by a uh, state issued identification card. Okay. All that information is sent into Columbia to the election commission one time a year they send this gigantic Massive reel yeah. and load it into our system and then they're right. randomly pulled. By totally the random. Yeah. Totally random. Yeah because yeah, uh, individuals have called and said I would love to ser serve on jury duty can you put me on the list? Right. Can't put you on a list because yeah. the computer automatically does or it. Or if someone calls and says I'm on here all I'm getting called all the time what's right. happened? You'd say the same thing. It's right because individuals think like they could have got summons to jury duty in magistrate court last week mm -hmm. or to federal court last week right. and then summons to circuit court this week it's only good it, every three years you can be called. You don't have to be called anymore in three years. But just because you were in magistrate court last week, that does not include in the three year for circuit court. So each court stands on its own. Golly, Melanie. Well, that's a big deal for folks giving up time. Or Of course, a lot right. of it is a real service that's opportunity. Correct. I'm sure a lot of people really come out of that thinking, I really did made a difference. That's right. And that gives uh, individuals that's not in the system all the time an idea of really what goes on like in here and how it works. Yes. Passports. I had no idea that you could come to the clerk of court to get a passport, you having can. traveled to a post office to do that. You can, and we have done that for years and years. And you can come anytime from 8 to 5 to the location here in Conway, or you can go to the location on Homestown Road. Is that right down in Surfside Beach um, or in that area? That's on correct. Homestown Road. Right, and we have we do a tremendous amount in that area because that's the closest place except for Charleston County. Oh, you either really? have to come to Conway to the post office or to clerk's office here or there or either go to Charleston County. So there's nothing in Georgetown County? No, we have individuals come from Georgetown that That is incredible. How could us. that be? I mean, why? Uh, I mean, I can't even imagine that. Because it's not mandatory right. that the clerk's office has to do it. That's just right. always been done by the Erie County Clerk of Court, and I'm not going to stop it. I love it. I, I think it's tremendous. And are you all processed? I mean, do a lot of people actually do get passports through we the clerk's office? We processed over 3,000 in 2010. Really? we did. Wow. And all that information is on my website as well. All the forms, uh, the 
anything that you need to apply for the passport, like your right. photos, your birth certificates, okay, all that kind of information. All that is on my website well, along with the application. My website a couple times now, so we right. better give viewers that uh, address. Okay, if you go to the Ory County website, the www.orycounty.org, okay. and okay. then just click on to the clerk of court link. Right. and it takes you right into uh, the clerk of court webpage. You know, a lot of viewers may not have internet access. Is there a good phone number someone could call if they just had some basic questions about the passport? Right, 915-5080. Okay, 843-915-5080. That is the main That's number wonderful. to the clerk of court's office. Okay, or again, orycounty.org and then click on the clerk of court's Right, office. and lots of individuals 16 and under, you have to have both parents with you to get a passport. If, if it's a minor, 16 or under, both parents have to be both parents present to sign and show identification to sign for it. Interesting, and I see why. Both and they are have necessary. to have the long birth certificate that you can get only get in Columbia. That oh. did not offer that in the local offices. And as of April the first this year, any individual, regardless of age, has to have the long. Um, birth certificate. So if you're plan anybody out there that's planning on trying to get a passport, right. you have better get busy with Columbia to get that long form birth certificate that because that's mandatory now. Yes, thank you for sharing that, Melanie. That is sure. critical. And again, 915-5080 if folks have a question. Foreclosures on the mind of a lot of people, particularly in Horry County where real estate is so critical. Do foreclosures, I think you said uh, when people are filing for those, you may pass them on to the master and equity, but what are those numbers? Have those been significant? Yes, in 2010, we filed over 2,800 foreclosure right? cases. Altogether, we filed 11,900 civil cases. In 2000, almost 3,000 of those were foreclosures. That but the incredible. first quarter of 2011, we've already filed over 1,000. No. 1,078, matter of fact, since January. Almost 35, 40 percent of correct. what you filed in all of 2010. That's correct. That is incredible, Melanie. Yes. Well, that is surely something I know a lot of people are following. Let's pray those numbers keep going down, or at the very least, for the real estate industry, that uh, that that inventory will be cleaned out. I hope so. Yeah. I really do. Golly, you know, you think about all the filings for you in family court, civil court, and criminal court. Can you share with viewers? You just said in. Civil court, 11,000 is the, how about on the 11, family court? Almost 12,000, it was 11,970, I think it was. Okay, right. Yep, and then in family court, we filed over 3,000. Mm. And in criminal court, we filed over 7,000 arrest warrants. Mm. Golly, yes. 7,000. See what we have to do as far as the arrest warrants, they come in from the magistrate's office. Mm -hmm. Once they're served, all magistrates and municipalities by law have 15 days to transmit them to the clerk of court's office. Mm. Then by law, the clerk of court's office has 48 hours, two days, to enter the information into the system, get the copies made, and get them transmitted to the solicitor's office. Mm. Mm. So see how we all work together, kind of, it's like a chain reaction, how we all work together. Real hands-on. Yes. I mean, you have to, and that's a great thing, of course, about having a government and justice center like this, the ability for you to even be close to each other if someone's not picking up the phone or otherwise. I mean, you're really working in tandem. Right, we are. That and we all work very close together and great together. We have a great group in the Judicial Center. That's wonderful, Melanie. What has been the best part for you of your now almost six years of service, or six plus years of service as the clerk here for Horry County? Well, all the great people that I have met while I've been in this job, <clears throat> the closest that I have with the employees in the clerk's office, we're like a family. We are right. very, very close. Right. And most of all, being, at, being in a position that I can help people in this county who need help, that's been, that's just great to me, that's to be able tremendous. to help people. That's wonderful. Melanie, thank you so much for being with us this morning. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Oh, thank you for having me. Yes. I truly enjoyed it and let's, hope to come back again. Let's, let's get on back. Stay tuned for a little more All American People, the Honorable Melanie Huggins Ward, coming up next. You know, a lot of folks don't have internet access, but if you do, you need to take the time. If you've got a question, you heard Melanie say it, if you've got a question about civil or family court dockets, about passports, about even some of the issues going on, child support, other questions you might have. Those, jury duty, that's a huge one. Those question and answers are gonna be online at orycounty.org.
click on legal services, and then click on clerk of court. A lot of folks, of course, don't have internet access, so they need to pick up the phone. You heard Melanie say that as well. Pick up the phone, give them a call, 843-915-5080, 915-5080. It's an important role, you think, for Melanie, growing up, thinking maybe she wanted to be an attorney. Instead, now, day in and day out, being around attorneys. And attorneys are making a difference in so many ways. You can be a part of making a difference as well. Just pick up the phone or go online. Melanie, thanks again. Thank you Very for special. having me.